uh, warm welcome from Tony City. So today we are having some guest speakers. I will present them later. But first, I'd like to briefly uh, introduce what we are doing for those who are not familiar. So we are a company based in Dublin. We have been founded in 2015. We are dedicated to the development of innovative nutritional products, which are not only beneficial for the animal health, but which also guarantee a return on investment for the producers. And we spend a lot of time and a lot of energy on doing trials. So we are a research-driven company. We have conducted, uh, that was updated in April, so since then, we have more than that, but at least we have uh, finished 139 trials in 31 different countries. Uh, some are research trials, some are producer evaluation trials, and to date we have close to 200,000 pigs uh, in completed trials. So today we are welcoming uh, two gentlemen from the company Tecna in France. I just want to make it clear that there is no links between Tonicity and Tecna as far as business or whatever else is concerned. The only link we have is this webinar. We are inviting different people from the industry to present what they are doing and to possibly educate you. So we have two speakers today. Uh, the first one is Sébastien Doué is the formulation manager for Tecna France Nutrition. He has 20 years of experience in animal nutrition and is in charge of the technical support around formulation of complete feeds and expertise on raw materials for feed mills, integrators and farmers. And Sébastien will explain the concept of feed formulation and the work of the formulation manager and also he will go through some practical examples to show the impact that some decision can have on the formula and especially its cost. And the second speaker is also called Sebastian, but Sebastian Comin is a pig nutritionist in Tecna for the last 15 years. He has been in charge of research trials, developing innovative solutions, innovative solutions such as softwares, products, expertise and is providing customized advice to companies involved in pig nutrition in various countries. So Sebastian will show us how it is possible through formulation to feed piglets for a successful weaning without medication such as for example antibiotics and zinc oxide. This is of course a subject that Tonicity is very interested in and where we can help uh, because we improve gut health and we also encourage the feed intake at winning and this is something I am sure that Sebastian will discuss. So uh, Sebastian, it is up to you. Thank you for presenting today. Thank you Mathieu and thank you for Tony City for inviting us and giving us the opportunity to speak about um, formulation on the principle of formulation, the application to, to swine uh, diet. So you will have two Sebastian for, for this uh, presentation. Um, before the presentation, few words about uh, my company, so Tecna. Tecna was uh, founded in 1964 by two experts in animal nutrition on um, on, on nutrition. So they were working uh, at the beginning uh, in France, uh, west part of France. 20 years after, in 1984, it was the, the first uh, factory uh, to manufacture a mix of uh, premix, uh, mix of vitamin, trace element, and additives. On today, uh, Tecna, Tecna Group, is working um, in more than uh, 40 countries all over the world. And you, you can see on this uh, slide uh, our five brands, Aquaneo for aquaculture, Natural for animal specialities sold directly in farm, 
Pascal's cheval, um, in charge of uh, all specialties for horses, greener for crop and uh, plant production, and Fidia. So Fidia, um, the job of Fidia is to support feed me on farmers. And I am working, uh, in fact, for Fidia for all the job about formulation. Few words uh, also about uh, R&D means. Uh, of course, our expertise is based uh, on uh, research center, on experiments. So you have a picture of uh, our research center located in, uh, in France. Thanks to, to this research center, we are able to, to test um, uh, raw material on different kind of complete field on different solution. Let's talk about now uh, formulation. So some generalities about formulation. The first uh, target of formulation is to supply exactly uh, what need uh, animal. So it's easy to say, it's more complicated to, to put in, in practice. And the, the part of the job is to, it's to supply not too much, not too little. Not too much because, um, like you know, uh, if you have too much energy, too much protein, it costs money. This is the first reason. On the other reason, it could be a problem to have excess of some nutrients. Uh, it could be a uh, link with sanitary problem. And of course, not too little. It is well known that um, the supply of lysine, for example, will impact the, the result on the, on the weight gain. When we are talking about uh, requirements of animals, uh, you can divide in different family of nutrients. There is water. Uh, water usually is not um, supplied by complete feed. Could be uh, if you have a, a wet, uh, wet supply. There is vitamin and trace element, which uh, usually supply by uh, a product with uh, a fixed incorporation rate in the complete feed. And there is energy, proteins, minerals. On formulation, we focus mainly on these three family of nutrients by a mix of raw material and nutrients to try to, to find uh, the good supply for these three kind of uh, needs. About energy, energy is usually the first uh, cost of money in, in a feed uh, with protein. There is different kind of energy. The first is gross energy. Gross energy could be measured in a lab. It is, in fact, the amount of, uh, of heat when you burn the raw material. But the gross energy is not completely used by the animal. Like I'm, I'm sure you know it, that uh, a part of energy is lost in the feces. So gross energy minus the energy lost in the feces, you will have digestible energy. There is also part of energy lost in urine. So you will have metabolizable energy. There is also after, next step, part of energy lost uh, with the heat uh, produced by the animal and with the energy lost during the metabolism. You will have the net energy. What is important for the, the formulator, this is this net energy because it will be uh, the energy used for the production, for the maintenance, by the animal. So if you want to, to evaluate the production of milk, of meat, you will have to, to base your formulation on net energy. So why using uh, net energy? Here you have a, a chart with four different raw materials. So you will see the, oh, sorry, the digestible energy are very close. It is the red, uh, the red point about 3,400 kilocalories. But the net energy is very different uh, according to each raw material. The wheat, the corn, it is still uh, more than 2,500. But if you see the soya bean meal, because of the high value of protein, it decreases the net energy and the use by the annuals. So the formulator has to use this value of net energy in the field, and he has to evaluate all these raw material with this criteria. About protein, the other big cost in a formula, usually people, uh, the first uh, key point is the crude protein aspect, but in fact, the formulator, what it needs, it's digestible amino acid, and especially ideal protein. So you have this well-known uh, image of, 
of this barrel. And if one piece of the barrel is missing, you cannot fulfill the, the barrel. It's the same for the growth of the animal. Is one digestible amino acid is missing, you couldn't you couldn't have the potential growth of the of the animal. So the first amino uh, acid uh, with limiting for for pig is well known. It is lysine. In this experiment, we we try different level of lysine from uh, 0.88 to uh, 1.16, and you see that the growth uh, increase up to 1.13. So there is a, a big impact uh, of lysine on the daily growth. But after 1.13 no more impact on the day growth. So maybe it's not useful in this case. It was an experiment for piglets about uh, 20, 25 uh, kilograms. No need to put more than 1.6. Moreover, it could be uh, a negative impact of an excess of protein. It is well known, especially in, in piglets, that if you have too much protein, it could be too much undigestible protein on this Undigestible protein is a substrate for pathogenic bacteria. It's, it could also increase the buffering capacity uh, of the complete thing and so slow down acidification and digestion. On acidification could be could help uh, to increase the digestibility of the of the complete thing. So the difficulty of the job of, of formulator, the first difficulty, is to try to find the good value. You you are always on a small line, uh, not too much, not too little, not easy to to, to manage. Uh, to be sure to have the good value for your animals. So a mix of, uh, to conclude on this first part, uh, a complete feed is a mix between raw material, of course, but it is um, mostly, uh, moreover, a mix of different nutrients, energy, protein, minerals, and trace elements and vitamins. I would like to focus also there is a small problem with my image. I would like to focus also on quality control plan. What is it, quality control plan? It's control the complete feed to be sure that your factory is working well because the formula on the paper could be nice, but what is important in the, is the complete feed in the bag. So the job is to control the complete feed, but also the raw material. So the formulator, before doing this formula, uh, has to evaluate precisely the, the value of his raw material. So he has to record the data about the raw material and to try to, to choose the good matrix, what we call matrix of formulation. To explain this, uh, you have here, for example, an example of quality control. So the green line will be the theoretical value that you expect on your complete field, for example, 16. On the blue line, will be the value real analyzed on your field. So sometimes you have some excess, so it is a waste of nutrients. Sometimes you have a lack, so you decrease the zootical performance. So our job in quality control will be to check on raw material on a complete field very quickly the value of the raw material on the complete field and try to update this value to be sure to have what you need in the complete field. So it could be in a lab, like um, with chemistry uh, method, or it could be with an IR. An IR system uh, helps us now a lot to do this cycle very quickly, to be sure to have uh, your results after one day, two days. Because it's not very useful to analyze the raw material and to have the result after one week, and to have another one week to update your matrix, and another one week to, to, to put in fabrication uh, your formula. So uh, today, a big part of the job of the formulator is to work on this matrix. We have to, to check, to control the, the raw material, of course, the general appearance, the look, the smell, the taste uh, of the raw material. You have to control the main specification, like moisture, protein, fat. You could, you could check uh, time to time uh, amino acids, for example, or fatty acid. These analyses are more expensive. So it's complicated for a field mill to do it every batch or even every month. And of course, there is also what we call physical analysis like granulometry, durability, hardness that could impact also the, the results uh, in the farm or hardness of a pellet. 
uh, is a, um, an important criteria for a piglet, for example. What we have to analyze uh, on complete field, uh, you have uh, a different raw material, wheat, corn, uh, DDGS, wheat bran, some meal. Moisture and protein uh, are two criteria that uh, we analyze nearly all the time. Protein, it is well known because it sinks with amino acids. Moisture, because it could impact the storage of the raw material. And also because it impacts very quickly the value of energy of the feed. You understand that uh, more you have some moisture in your raw material, less energy you will have. But you will have also another criteria, like fat, like fiber, or starch, or ash, that will impact the value of energy. Fat, uh, important to do on uh, DDGS and distillers, not so important on wheat. Why? Because the value of fat on the wheat is more stable and not so important. On the contrary, uh, fiber could be important in the wheat because it could change according to the harvest and could impact the, the energy value. So the job of the formulator is also to focus on to try to find uh, the good criteria to predict the value of his raw material and to try to, to find the good value after of net energy, for example. What is the impact of the, the change uh, of quality of raw material on the field? On this slide, uh, you, can, you can see a complete field, which is uh, an example of a uh, grower feed for pig. So you will have some wheat, 40%, some barley, 38%, soybean meal, sunflower, oil, and the mineral. So in this case, the, the objective, the, the value of this formula is 16% of protein and 0.86 of digestible lysine. This value was calculated with the protein, protein value of the wheat 11, protein value of the barley 9.5, protein value of the soya 45.5. But if you have the chance to have a better value for your protein on wheat 12, a better value for barley, 11. A better value for soybean meal, 46. In fact, the value of your complete feed is not 16, but 16.9. The value of digestible lysine increased by 0.03. It means you have more nutrients, but we have seen that it's not really an advantage. Maybe your, your pig will have um, better growth, but you don't know what you want. In fact, at the beginning, it was 0.86. So only by uh, doing a new formula with a good value of crude protein on this three more material, you can save incorporation rate of soybean meal. You can decrease by one the incorporation rate of soybean meal. And you see, you, you find again 0.86 of digestible lysine. And the big advantage here, it's thanks to your quality control, you decrease the cost of the feed by eight euros or 10 dollars. So you can imagine that the gain at the end of the year will be very important if you manufacture 1,000 ton or 10,000 tons of, of this feed. So this is a big uh, advantage, the, the big, um, uh, why you need to, to do this quality control and to adapt your matrix. There is a big potential gain on your feed. So there is, uh, I take um, an example with protein, but it will be the same for other nutrients. Here you have crude fiber, for example, for soybean meal. It is a real example uh, of one of our customers. You see the batch of soybean meal could change a lot on this criteria, crude fiber. It could be from three to 6.6% 6 .6 of crude fiber. So three points of, um, of good fiber will impact the energy value of your raw material. It depends on the spacing, but it could be from 50 to 150 kilocalories. And this value in a feed, it means one to three euro per ton one more time. So you can imagine that uh, if you take into account uh, fiber, ash, starch, there is big potential gain on the cost of your feed or on the technical result for your animals. 
let's talk now, let's talk now about uh, some practical example and formulation. So uh, I spoke a lot about the quality of raw material. When you have uh, found the good value of your corn, for example, you can calculate what we call a matrix. Here you have an example of uh, some nutrients uh, on a corn for pigs. So we have choose, for example, a value for fat, a value for, for starch, a value for protein, for moisture. And we will calculate all the different energy that you need for, for pig formulation. We will calculate the value of fatty acids, the value of amino acids. You have to imagine that we, we do this job for um, about 300 nutrients for each species on each raw material. So today, our database, it's a very huge database on raw material. We have more than uh, 35,000 raw material in our database because we have not just one corn, but maybe 2,000 or 3,000 corn. One corn is different, maybe with two factories because they, they are buying uh, in different uh, locations their corn. So you have chosen a matrix for each raw material. You have next step to, to put the good price. So here it is a, a copy of the screen, uh, our software of formulation. So I put, uh, it was a price um, during this summer uh, in France for some raw material. So some raw material are available. You see here in this column, available. So corn, barley, wheat. Some others are not really available in the factory because maybe they have not enough place to put all this raw material, but it's possible on the market to find sorghum, rye, or oats. So the interest here to put in the software is that you will be able to test the interest for your formula. So you put all your price. Uh, another question, uh, usually in formulation, do we have to put the price of the market or your purchasing price? In fact, the better way, the best way is to put the market price because if you are, for example, for rapeseed, if you put your purchase price, you have a very good price, very nice price. You will use very quickly this raw material rapeseed. So you will have to buy again after a few weeks a new rapeseed meal, and it will be at the market price. So always, it's more interesting for, for a company, for a film mill, to work with market price. After, of course, if you have to calculate uh, the cost of your feed, you will calculate it with your purchasing price. But the optimization, usually, you have to do it with market price. So step three, you choose the raw material. Step one, step two, you choose the price. You will choose the specification of your formula. So it is some specification, you see, uh, mean, max. So in this formula, there is a, a mean for net energy, for swine. There is some mean for, for fat, for fiber. It could be some means on lysine. And after, uh, it is not uh, on the screen, but there is also a mean for minerals or other amino acids. So this will depend uh, on the target you have on your performances or maybe uh, about the cost uh, of the pig. It depends on different things. You will have to put also specification maximum on the raw material available in your factory or not. Here, for example, I put maximum barley 50. I put some maximum on corn 52. Fish meal uh, 5, but it's not available. But you have it in memory in the software. So when you have choose all the specification on nutrients, on raw material, you can do an optimization. Here again, it is a copy uh, of uh, our software. So the optimization give us a price of the feed, it is in euro, and give us the value of the feed. And you see here, there is some nutrients on yellow, it's mean, the software would like to, to put less than uh, 2.3 for net energy, but we have put a limit, so it is, there is a cost of constraint. And all the jobs of the formulator will be to check this cost of constraint and to see if the cost is usual, not usual. A cost here is quite usual today in France for net energy. But maybe for some time, or if the, you have not uh, oil, or I don't know, or the raw material, you could have a very high cost. 
So the job will be maybe to say, okay, my energy is too expensive, I will, I will have to decrease. On the other hand, sometimes the cost is very low. You, you have to check and to think maybe it could be useful to put more energy in my feed, if there is a technical interest, of course, because the cost today is very low. So it will be for each formula, time to time, for the formulator to try to see if the cost of constraint are logical. There is the same, here it is a copy of the composition of the feed. So the software gave us, gave us a, a composition, barley, 40%, wheat, rapeseed, soybean meal, red wine, limestone, a premix, and after the minerals and amino acid. And there is also a cost of constraint, a rapeseed. For example, rapeseed is interesting in the formula. 10%, the software would like to put more, but the gain, the potential gain is quite low. In this case, this means you will save only 0.05 euros for one point of rapeseed. So like rapeseed is maybe not so digestible than soya, maybe you have not enough rapes, there is a limit, about 10% in the feed. Step five, another step, of course, sometimes you have to change your formula. So um, here uh, I take an example. If you have no more rapes meal, you have to replace by something. So I delete uh, rapes from the formula, and you see here in the colon difference what happened in the formula. The software put more soybean meal on some sunflower meal on there in the formula. Usually you have some competition between two or three raw materials in the field. It could be competition between, for example, barley or wheat or wheat and corn on sunflower meal, on rapeseed meal. And depending on the price of the market, sometimes sunflower meal could be interesting, sometimes it's rapeseed meal. So in this case, it was sunflower meal. And it changed also not only uh, the rate of soybean meal on sulfur meal, but also the incorporation rate of wheat, barley, and wheat bran, because you change about the meal. Uh, it could be uh, because of the energy of the each raw material, which is different. So he has, the software has to change the composition of the field. Another situation, you have a new harvest, for example, of corn. Uh, the corn will arrive in one month, for example, more or less in France. So the, the, the price of the corn uh, began to decrease. So you have a new price of corn, the corn enters in the formula, and so you will decrease your barrel on your wheat. The formulator always have to, to, be, to check very quickly on the market what could be the interesting raw material uh, in the coming months to adapt its formula, because maybe the good price of corn uh, will be only during two months, three months. So you have to change your formula on every, um, every month, we can say, or when the market change. Another situation could be uh, that the, um, the lies in change, for example. Imagine that you, you want to increase the lies in value from 0 0.84 to 0 0.90, for example, in, in your field it will change the formula. So in this case, uh, I take a value of lies in 0 0.90, and you see it increase the value of soybean meal. In fact, the lies in does not increase because we ask the software to, ask to, to increase not only the lies in, but all the amino acids. So we prefer to, in this case, to increase soybean meal in the formula and to decrease a little bit with gram. So, uh, few few words about the conclusion. What is the job of formulation? It's to uh, to put in the software information coming from the personal manager or all the information about the price, information from laboratory. He has to work with some laboratory to check the raw material. He has to work with a factory, of course and to adapt maybe his formula is a factory wants a pellet uh, with less hardness or with more durability. He could put some constraint of oil, for example. He has to work with some experts uh, on animal nutrition to try to find the good specification of his feed. Some experts on raw material uh, to try to have the good value 
on, on the raw material to evaluate the net energy, for example. And with all these data, we will try to, 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 to do the best formula for, for the spaces, for the different spaces. So uh, it's finished for the generalities on formulation. I will uh, let the other Sebastian speak about uh, pigs, piglets. Morning, everybody, or good afternoon. I hope everybody can hear me. I guess it's the case. So I will follow on Sebastian with a more um, precise uh, or more focused presentation, focusing on a typical example of what we have to face when we formulate a piglet feed diet. And this presentation is focusing on how to feed piglets for a successful weaning without medications. So medications for us is antibiotics or zinc oxide. Uh, typically, as you might know, a young piglet at weaning is uh, most of the time facing issues with his feed intake. Most of times we can see the, the anorexia, so the stress due to the sow separation is uh, generating a, a low feed intake from piglets. In the same time, the, this piglet is most of the time not um, totally mature in terms of digestive. Uh, ability, capacities, so he is not able to digest everything quickly and easily. And finally, in between those two challenges, we have a third one, which is that the, the microbiota, so the, the bacteria growing in the gut, is not balanced and is not uh, able to be stable in time. So that's typically what the piglet is facing at winning. In the same time, um, we are trying to use less and less medication. So that's typically what we are doing at the moment in probably clearly in Europe. I, I guess it's the same situation in America and probably more and more in Asia. Uh, the situation is that we, we've been using antibiotics um, either as a need feed growth promoter or to prevent diarrhea. So the first typical usage was low doses of antibiotics to, to improve the performances. And this was leading to a, a rapid selection of resistant bacteria that were able to resist to this low dosage of antibiotics. And the issue is coming from this idea of having a, a transmission of the bacteria from the pig to the humans, which is creating a major public health concern because the antibiotics are no longer effective for the humans. So that's the problem. The second kind of uh, antibiotic use is based on this idea of preventing, it's a medical practice, preventing scours, diarrhea. So most of the time it's a an, an higher dose of antibiotics, so systematic most of the time, which is slowly selecting the resistance, but a resistance to high dose of, the, of um, antibiotics. So it's creating exactly the same issue with the public health concern. And for those two reasons, we have at the moment a very intense consumer and government pressure to decrease the use of antibiotics. So we have to deal with it. On the other hand, we have this issue, uh, maybe more recent, focusing on the zinc oxide and typically on the pharmacological dose of zinc oxide. So the pharmacological dose for me is uh, around 2,500 ppm of zinc coming from the zinc oxide. So this is used to prevent the, the scours, the diarrhea, same topic as the antibiotics. Uh, basically, it's, it's based on the idea that zinc oxide will have an antioxidant, antimicrobial, and cell protective properties. So it's quite beneficial in some points. But the problem is coming from the fact that uh, 2,500 ppm from, from zinc oxide is a very, very massive zinc intake. It's approximately 25% of the requirement. So clearly about 95% of this ingested zinc will be excreted, excreted in the surrey. So then it's generating water pollution with the heavy metal. 
that's the first issue. And the second issue is, is the idea of um, the resistance of bacteria. Some bacteria can become, can become resistant to both the zinc and the antibiotic in the same time. So it's called co-selection. So for, for those two reasons, uh, the pharmacological dose of zinc will be banned in the EU, European Union from 2022, and probably most countries will follow this direction. So the thing is, we have a very uh, weak picket sensitive to the stress, and in the same time, we are trying to use less and less medications. So that's why we are trying to switch from this kind of uh, left situation, so a very highly concentrated diet with a lot of energy, a lot of protein especially, uh, which was pushing us to the use of antibiotics and to the use of miracle products. So that's the situation a decade ago, and we are trying to switch more and more to a more uh, uh, a healthy diet with less concentrated nutrients, and we are trying to substitute the medication with a lot of expertise, knowledge, trial, on-farm trials, and things like that. And all that is only possible if the farmer is doing everything right on the farm, so that's the other challenge. So nutritionists and farmers are now trying to change this situation from medications to non-medicating diets. So what is our research focus then? If you understood my first slide, uh, because we have those three challenges, anorexia, microbiota, and immunity, immaturity, sorry. So we have to focus our research on mainly three topics, Feed intake, intestinal health, and digestibility. So I will I will give you some very short examples uh, on, on the three topics: feed intake, intestinal health, and, and digestibility. So the feed intake. Uh, to have a very short example, I will only speak about lactose. So lactose is the sugar coming from the milk, uh, and lactose is improving directly and indirectly the feed intake. If you have lactose coming from the milk derived uh, ingredients into the feed, then you will feed the piglets with it, and the lactose will be uh, fermented by the lactic acid bacteria, which will produce lactic acid, which is responsible for decreasing the pH. In the same time, you have specific molecules killing bacteria with antimicrobial uh, properties. So, indirectly, you have thanks to the lactose, less digestive disorders. So that's the prebiotic effect. And in the same time, the animal is uh, using the lactose because it's a very digestible uh, energy source. Lactose is easy to digest into galactose and glucose, which is finally uh, providing energy to the piglets. And energy is needed for growth. So if you, if you grow quickly, then you have a higher feed intake. So that's the nutritional effect. So that's typically one example of how to improve the feed intake. Lactose is a key point in the formulation, both directly and indirectly. That's for feed intake. The second example is uh, dealing with intestinal health. Uh, so I will quickly go into the, the fiber world. Uh, this slide is trying to summarize in a quite simplistic vision the various fibers you can find in in vegetables in raw materials so on the left part you have the various molecules the one you can find in the, in the plants you can have uh, both soluble or insoluble fibers most of the soluble fibers will be more um, able to be fermented so if you need to have more fermentable fibers, you will rather use the top one, oligosaccharides, will an impact, they will impact the microbiota. But typically, the, those ones won't have any water holding capacity. So if you are looking for something with a more uh, watery compartment uh, behavior, then you will switch to pectines or hemicellulose that will provide the water holding capacity, but in the same time, you could have some issues due to the viscosity. 
So it's not so easy, typically, to have the water holding without the viscosity. And if you need something more neutral, you can use the lignin, which is uh, low in energy, low in water holding, and quite nearly not non fermentable. So I'm trying just to focus on these various properties of fibers, because fibers are really um, a good uh, level, a good criteria to help us in, in formulating pellet feed diets. Should I switch to this one? Okay, that's no, right. Sorry. sorry. Uh, the third example is speaking about digestibility and uh, anti nutrient factors. Uh, as you might have understood already, the, this idea of ideal protein is uh, very important. The idea is basically that you need to provide the proper digestible amino acid ratios to the pellets so that you have the, the maximal growth potential. So that is really important. We are trying to formulate all the pellet feed diets uh, with a very big focus on the amino acids ratio. That's an example. Um, as part of it, you can also um, notice this idea of having um, various as an example, various threonine ratio, depending on the, the amount of stress you are generating on your pellets. The more challenging the situation is, the higher the ratio should be, typically. But then the problem is, if you are trying to provide digestible amino acid, so the, the green one, blue one on the left, in the same time, you, you will provide an undigestible fraction which is going to the hindgut, and this will be fermented and producing quite harmful metabolites, typically ammoniac things like that. So when we are trying to provide to the animal the digestible amino acid, we are also providing, because we can't go only with pure uh, amino acids, you are only providing, you are also providing undigestible amino acids. So what we are trying to do with the young piglets feed diets is trying to focus on the digestible amino acid, provide them on the right ratios, and trying to minimize as much as we can the undigestible fraction. So that's a very important point, especially in pellet feed diets. So the higher the protein is, the more risk you have in a diet, typically. Decreasing anti-nutritional factors, uh, I will give you just some example quickly. Uh, as you know or not know, phytates are molecules from the from the plants providing phosphorus. The problem with phytates is that they are binding amino acids, cation, starch molecules, so they are making them undigestible. So that's a good reason for us to use high doses of very effective phytase, so the, the, the enzymes. So we are using a lot of enzymes to prevent these uh, anti-nutritional factors. Another example is the anti-trypsic factors from the soy. So the soy, if you, if you don't cook it, you can have a very high uh, anti-trypsic amount in the feed. And these anti-trypsic factors are decreasing the protein digestibility. So they will generate more undigestible fraction. So that's a good reason for using protein concentrates. Uh, rather than standard protein. So a young piglet's diet is most of them based on potato protein, rice protein, soy protein concentrates, fish meal, things like that. Some other examples, uh, mycotoxins, so from moods, are generating inflammation, immune response, and they are lowering performances. So that's why we are using mycotoxin binders, always in piglet's diet. And the final example is the non-starch polysaccharides. So the fibers, they are decreasing digestibility. So we need some fibers, as I've been trying to explain to you. We need some fibers, but we are using some enzymes activities, uh, focusing on specific uh, kind of fibers so, so that we can use the fibers without having a too low digestibility, typically. 
So there are only a, a few examples of what we are trying to do in terms of formulation and additives. So as a conclusion, I will show you uh, very quickly um, a trial comparing two different um, seeding approach, we could say. Um, so we've been comparing uh, from weaning until 33 kilo of body weight, two different uh, feeding programs. The gray one is a standard program, typical with Vincoxide. And the orange one is uh, another vision of what should be the piglet's feeding program without the Vincoxide. The main differences in between the two programs. Um, so the two programs were uh, three phases program. So each, each phase is uh, two to three weeks of duration. The standard program in gray will use 2500 ppm of zinc in the first phase, so the pharmacological uh, dose of zinc. And then you are switching to 150 ppm, which is more or less the requirement. Uh, comparing, being compared to that, you have the alternative program not using the high dose of zinc. So it's only 150 ppm of zinc all the way through. Uh, we've been using uh, in the alternative feeding program uh, a specific additive that we've been developing in, in Tecna. Uh, so briefly, Reganol is a essential oil and plant extract partially um, encapsulated and, and focusing on antimicrobial -micro, anti properties. So we, we were using it in our strategy and not in the standard strategy. Then on the formulation point of view, um, as you can clearly see, a standard program is clearly higher in protein, higher than the alternative program, one to two points of protein less. So it's a large difference. So we've been using less uh, digestible lysine and also less protein based on the idea that we will have more health benefits than we will decrease the performance. So that's the idea trying to have a better health so that the piglets will grow naturally uh, quickly. Uh, so using uh, additive will cost you some money, decreasing the protein will cost you some money as well. So you need to save some money and we suggested the idea of using soybean meal uh, in the phase one, which is a bit cheaper than the only protein concentrates. So the final points, uh, the two feeding programs are not so different in terms of prices. On top of that, uh, we've been using a lot of barley. So barley, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with that, barley is mostly providing specific fibers, beta glucans, uh, which will have a benefic um, properties on the microbiota. And barley was uh, complemented with a, a fiber nucleus concentrates, a blend of specific fibers that we are using. So if you use those specific fibers, uh, both barley and regular fiber, decreasing with uh, with age, then you can have a specific uh, fiber profile in the field. So finally, this is what we've been measuring on, on the, during the trial. At the beginning, so day 21 is the winning. Uh, both groups were same weight, 6.8 kilo. Two weeks later, um, the alternative program, the physio program, was significantly lower in terms of weight. So we are not benefiting from, from the zinc side. But if you wait a bit, so you have the phase two and then phase three, you can clearly see that thanks to the better health that we can uh, provide earlier, then the pilot will grow more and more quickly. And at the really end of post winning, you can have one more kilogram of body weight. So it's changing a bit the, the habits because the, the growth rate is not the same one. You, you are slowly starting and increasing progressively with time. So the really beginning, you could, you could think that it's a disaster, but it's not really a disaster. You just have to wait and see your pilot growing easier and easier with time. So at the end, you can have something different, but clearly effective. So that's what we are trying to promote more and more. And that's the end of our presentation. So if you have questions, I think we can treat the questions, both of us.
and you need to turn off your microphone for that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Sebastian and Sebastian, for for your presentation. Um, I would like to know uh, how do you evaluate the digestibility of the raw materials? Because you said it's important to know it. So can you help us on this? Okay. Um, about the question of evaluation um, for material, it's an important question, sure. The key point is the digestibility of energy, digestibility of amino acids, of phosphorus. And it's possible to, to do some tests uh, in vivo in animals and in our research center, for example. Uh, every week, we have some experiment to, to measure uh, these digestibilities. Uh, you measure exactly what you give. So you know the intake of the animal, you measure the energy supply, the, the protein, the amino acid, and you will collect all the feces and measure in the feces um, what is not retained in the body. So by difference, you can evaluate the, the digestibility of the raw material. So you, we, we do it um, on cock, on, on broiler, on corn, of course, uh, with some uh, grower peas to try to, to evaluate the raw material. So it could be a new factory, for example, uh, a new raw material, it could be new harvest, of wheat, of corn, we have to evaluate if this harvest this year is nearly the same. Uh, we use it also to, to try to find some equation between maybe 20 different corn. What is the main impact on digestibility? Is it uh, the fat value? Is it uh, the fiber value? Which kind of fiber? So to, to, to answer uh, to this question, uh, you could base it on some international table or database, but our main uh, job is to, to use our research answer to evaluate the raw material. I don't know if it is, uh, it is clear. And, uh, yeah, it's clear. It's clear. Thank you. Sebastian, you said that uh, you have to do the formulation from time to time, and you mentioned to do it every month. So I would like to know, is it every month for every formula, or maybe there are some formula that you have to optimize more often or less often? What is your strategy? Yes, about the, the frequency of optimization, uh, usually factory, big factory, do it every month. But every month, if you have uh, some factory, have uh, 2,000 formulas, they will don't do it uh, every month. They will choose the main importance uh, if you speak about volume. Big factory even do it every week. If you have a finishing pig or grower pig, it could be possible to do it every week, especially if you have some change of the raw material or if the, the price change on the market, for example. Sometimes the price of soybean meal could change very quickly. So it could be interesting to change every week. But after, it, it depends on the policy of the uh, of the field mill. We have also some customers that do it every six months or every year because they they want very stable formula or because uh, they think uh, it's possible to have a small change or because they, they have some supply of raw material of raw material with the high stability. So usually it's every month, sure, but it could be every week or every year. Maybe an exception is the piglet diet. Yes. Uh, the, the piglet diet is so uh, precisely formulated and so sensitive. Most of the feed mills won't uh, change it so often. So it's only maybe for the, for, the, for the most sensitive piglet diets, it's probably every six months or every 12 months. But it's an exception. OK, thank you. And in uh, today's context uh, of uh, raw material pricing and uh, quality of raw material that we have today, uh, is there any nutrient which is the most expensive, let's say, for piglet feed? For piglet feed, um, I think the, the most expensive today is still amino acid because 
It's quite complicated. We ask very high level, for example, of digestible lysine, digestible valine, uh, polyvinosine, and we try to reduce protein. So it means you have to search special kind of, uh, of protein, digestible protein, which costs money. So I think for piglet feed, the cost of protein is more important than energy cost, for example. After, if you speak uh, about other kind of feed for fattening, uh, energy could become more expensive, but usually is protein. Today, maybe the cost of protein is a little bit lower than some years ago because soya bean meal, uh, the price uh, has decreased for one, two years, but it's still the, the, the main cost today in, uh, in piglet. Okay. And a question maybe for the second Sebastian. Um, is it possible to formulate a good diet for winning piglets without medication like you presented? Is it possible to do it in any part of the world because there are different raw materials, there are also different conditions maybe? So what is your opinion there? Uh, theoretically, yes, it's feasible. It's totally feasible because I think we have the concepts in formulation that, that are needed to do it. Then the limiting factors are not the same. Typically in, in, in Asia or in, in Africa, most of the cereals are either rice or corn. And both of them are very low in fibers. So typically in Asia and Africa, we, we have a challenge with finding, finding, finding the proper fibers. But apart from that, you could do it. And in Europe, the, the challenge is mostly focused on the nature of protein, because most of the specifications are preventing animal and most of the time fish protein as well. So we are focusing on vegetable protein. So the, the, the difficulty is not coming from the same um, raw materials. But typically, uh, theoretically, we have the, the good concepts and you can you can adjust them to the local condition and it's, it's totally feasible to have them without any medications then of course the on-farm conditions are more or less limiting depending on the country and the situation so the on-farm situation is less under control most of the time okay thank you i don't see any other question is there anybody who wants to ask a question maybe you can use your microphone No question? Okay, in this case, we will uh, thank uh, Sebastian Doué and Sebastian Comin uh, for this presentation today, and thanks the team of Tecna for helping us to better understand the concept of fit formulation.